the nation's favourite celebrities. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Paired up with an expert. Oh, we've had some fun, haven't we? And a classic car. It feels as if it could go quite fast. Their mission? To scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I do that in slow mo. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. Come on, boys. But it's no easy ride. Ta-da! Who will find a hidden gem? <laughs> oh, sell me! Who will take the biggest risks? Go away, darling. Will anybody follow expert advice? <laughs> I'm trying to spend money here. There will be worthy winners. <laughs> yes! And valiant losers. <laughs> Put your pedal to the metal. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Today, it's all about hitting the right notes. I kind of feel like this is a really mean machine and you're driving it like a granny. Don't knock granny driving. Change gear, babe. <laughs> That'll be the one. <laughs> Cruising along in this throaty 1970 Trident Clipper, a husband and wife singing duo, David and Carrie Grant, who are swapping singing in harmony for a spot of competitive antiquing. Oh, yes. Even after 30 years, your first base attitude is, I'm going to beat you. Of like, literally, for 30 years you've been saying that. Yeah. And for 30 years you've been losing. Oh, come on! David Grant is an 80s pop icon who clocked up 14 hit singles and quickly became a television favourite. Carrie was a hit maker too, and as part of the group Sweet Dreams, she represented the UK in the 1983 Eurovision Song Contest. After becoming coaches and judges on talent shows, David and Carrie are now familiar faces on our TV screens. But for all that showbiz talent, it's shopping skills they'll need today. Don't get me wrong, you're good at shopping, but I am good at spotting a bargain. You know the cost of nothing. You yes. don't even know the cost of a loaf of bread now. So how do you think that you're going to go into a shop and suddenly gain this gift of knowing the value of something? Because, baby, I'm not going to be buying bread. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to be buying, but let me tell you something. I've already won if you're going to go and buy loaves of bread. <laughs> Our competitive couple will be guided away from the bread aisle by the expert hands of our auctioneers, Will Axon and Mark Stacey. They're bopping along in this pre-seatbelt era 1961 Morris 1000 in custard yellow. And I've heard Mark is a fan of Carrie's Eurovision past. She was in a group called Sweet Dreams that were in the Eurovision Song Contest in 1983 okay. with I'm Never Gonna Give You Up. I know you have an encyclopedic I love, knowledge. I'm not encyclopedia, but I love, I love Eurovision. Ooh, ah, uh, just, just a, a little, little bit, ooh, ah, uh, just little a little bit more. more. Mark Stacy, du spoil. Will Axon, nil point. <laughs> well, that concludes the judging from our expert jury. <laughs> Time for our hopefuls to meet their mentors. Good morning, I'm Hello there. How are you, Mark? I'm David. Nice to meet you, David. Hi, Carrie, Carrie, lovely to meet you. David, Will, how are you? I'm Will. Nice I'm to good, meet you. Thank you. Good. How are you? Carrie, no. how are you? No, I'm good, thank you. Good. We are so looking forward to this. We are, but we've we've decided our parents. Am I with you? Yeah, oh. because oh. I love you, Revision. Come here, you. Oh, Come here and give me a we, man. Hey. Oh, yeah. we are a team. And no, we're all bonded because this is our car. Um, no, I think you'll find. <laughs> The man with the keys ah. always wins. If you take a little look in there, you'll see my handbag reserved. <laughs> Try and start the car with a handbag. I'll keep the keys. <laughs> Come on, you talk about starting the car. Let's do it. Now that's and it's got a horn. This should be fun. <laughs> Carrie and David will have £400 each to spend, and their journey starts off in Land Beach in Cambridgeshire. They'll explore Suffolk and Hertfordshire and nip into Bedfordshire before heading north to Norfolk for an auction in Downham Market. Are you good at shopping? I'm really good at shopping, yes, I am, yeah. Are you good at bargaining? I'm not. I'll help you. Well, I'm relying on you heavily for everything, to be honest. That worries me a bit, you know. <laughs> you know, it's not that I mind losing to her. Not really, it's just that it would make my life unbearable if I did. It's bragging rights at home, isn't it? Big time. Well, let's get things moving then. And with a rural auction coming up, this could be the perfect place for David and Will to start their shopping adventure. 
Hello there. How are you doing? Will, how do you do? How are you doing? Yeah, good. I'm David. Hi, Hi David. Yeah, I'm Stan from Stan Teaks. Stan Teaks. Like, like what you did there, Stan. <laughs> this place is jam packed. Have a look round, guys. See what Thank you can you. find. Let's Thank have a wonder, you. David. Let's have a wonder. What? Oh, what have you got there? Straight in the Sh shooting stick. Are you a, a man of country pursuits? No. What do you think? A lot of people have one. If you're going to have one for decorative purposes, you want the old bamboo one with the caned seat, really. That's the one. Oh, really? Would, yeah. OK. So, so but, you know, it's a start. Oh. You're, showing, you're showing that you're keen. A bit of taxidermy. How do you feel about dead animals? I like the stuff. You see what I did there? OK. Um, <laughs> do you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the UK, all animals are protected by law, and items from endangered foreign species can be sold as long as they predate the 1947 CITES agreement, don't you know? I'm liking the wild boar. Yeah, you, how much is the wild boar? Best, best price, 120. Come on. <laughs> 120, well, it's a price. At it's least we've got, we got something to think about. Well, taxidermy isn't to everyone's taste and could be a big gamble, even at a rural auction. Meanwhile, Carrie and Mark are toddling along the road to Newmarket, the birthplace of horse racing, and they're under starters' orders in their first shop, Treasures Antiques. And it's big. Is that two floors? It is. I need a week in here. So, plenty of interesting things to get you going. Do you know that reminds me of Will? Why? He's, because he's such a bore. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take him to think that one up? Do you think we should split up? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know what to look for, but yes. Oh, I think you've got an eye. Oh, yeah. Nothing like throwing her in at the deep end, Mark. I feel like some of the stuff I'm seeing here is actually from my childhood home. Hornsey, springtime. Wow. Mark, I really like this as a set. Look, is that good? I love it. 60s, isn't it? Yeah, it, 1960s. Do you know it? I love the simplicity of it, and it's very in vogue in certain areas. They look lovely in your house. So I've got to stop buying for myself. Yes, but that's a very common thing to do when you're shopping, isn't it? Now, I found something which I think you'll hate. You just took that out of your pocket. I did. Were you trying to lick it? <laughs> I just think there's something about it. I think this is an antique one. There's a lot of modern tribal stuff around, but antique tribal stuff is quite collectible. If you see, there's a lot of dust and dirt in there. I'm not being funny, mm. but you're saying that in rural areas they won't go for a 1960s butter dish, but they'll go for something that's tribal with no arms. You hate it, don't you? I, I beyond hate it. OK. Thanks, Carrie. Bye. Lordy, this could be a long day. Meanwhile, in Land Beach, David and Will are still browsing. Little stationary boxes. These are all look like they should have cutlery in. Yep. They look like sort of fish services, fruit services, that sort of thing. Uh, you've got tins that are collectible. Whoa, well caught. Steady, Will. Let me see if there's anything in this little box, for instance. Let's have a look. Yeah, go on. Open her up. Well, there you go. The fish service. Oh. The Victorians love to complicate things. There's not much of a market for that these days. Do you use a fish service? Um, no. no. Well, anything more practical then? Now, what have you found? Look at that. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah. Good old saw. What kind of age would that be? Looking at the wear and so on. I mean, it's got to be sort of turn of the century, hasn't it? Sort of. Wow. 1900, something like that. Maybe a touch later, 1910 or something. So I don't this think could it's... be a century old. Yes. Do you think this is the kind of thing that might be of interest? I do. I quite like it. I quite like it. Again, it's got a sort of sculptural quality about it, hasn't it? OK. But do you like it? I do. I really like it. I think David might get the hang of this rather quickly. So where did he Just as well, that? Will spotted something else. What do you reckon to that bad boy? Wow. See it? Yeah. It's a little hand plough, not too big. Yeah. So it's, you know, accommodatable, if that's a word. It's definitely not. It evokes the fens, in my mind, Yes, doesn't it? I mean, all you see around is, is ploughed fields. Yes. There are ploughing competitions left, right and centre. Are still now? There's one held every year just down the road. So something like this, when would it have been used until...? 
again, I think if you're talking out in the provinces, probably up to the Second World War, that sort of period. It may even wow. have been used recently after the Second World War. I think that might have potential. Should we find out what it does? Yeah, let's find out, because I, th I like that. I do like that. Well, it's worth a shot, I suppose. Over in Newmarket, have our other pair agreed on anything yet? So just round this yes. corner... show me. ..I noticed these and I just am attracted to them. I love them. Yes. You hate them. Well, I don't hate them. Um, but they're sort of measuring jars, aren't they? Yes. Jugs. Are they common? They look really unusual to me. Well, they're, they're not that unusual. But I think they're ten pounds each. Oh. Yeah, let's um, forget that. Then. I mean, I, I think I, I like where you're going with this, but I think you know we can we can find maybe something. Don't humour me. Let's go somewhere else. I thought I was doing quite a <laughs> good job then. Well, what did you have in mind then, Mark? Carrie. Yes. Are you a porcelain lady? Do you know I walked past those earlier? Did you? And I thought. I like those, but I'm just going to be told they're tacky. No, they're not. Do you want to take that one? Yes. Are they not tacky, then? I don't think so. They're French porcelain, <laughs> um, possibly made in the sort of Paris area, around about 1870. And so this... I did have an eye. I should you just have. go... I was thinking they're a bit gaudy, I'll be told that's a bit naff. You're right, they are gaudy, but they're meant to be, because that was the taste of the day. Yeah. I quite like that sort of pale peach colour as well. Yeah, I just love the whole thing, yeah. I mean, they've... They're very flamboyant, aren't they? Hurrah! Something on which they both agree. With a ticket price of £79, Naz is here to talk money. We've seen these, mm -hmm. and we quite like them. Well, I think, I think we've got to make an offer. I'm chance at bartering. Hang no. on. Could we have them for cheaper, please? Are you willing to barter with us? Give me a figure, and then we'll work from there. And so I, I, no, 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 no. Go on, then. What would you say? £40. Can you come up a little bit? 41 <laughs> <laughs> what about 45? Can we do 45? I can do 55. Oh! 55. How about 50? Can we do 50? Oh my gosh. Did we just buy it? Well, you did. did we... Oh, is that I was, it now? I was, in full, I was in full flow there. <laughs> I think we could. I, Come on, I is think that we could. 51 I, pounds? I think we could have got it for 45. Never mind, that's the first purchase of the road trip. Great. The Etruscan style vase is for £50. Well done, Carrie. Now, how are the chaps getting along? I do like the look of this. Can you tell me anything about it? Uh, it's an old saw. Well, glad we cleared that one up. So now, what would this cost? £15, David. 15 OK. What if we had these two together? Are you liking the saw still? Yeah, I still like the saw. Yeah? What did you say for the saw? Did you say...? 300. There <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> nice try, but Stan still wants £15 for the saw. The plough actually looks like a push or wheel hoe, which would loosen the soil in your garden, and Stan's asking £25. What do you think, David? If I was shelling out £30 and taking both of them, would that be...? Oh, that sounds like a that? very fair could offer. Could we do that? It sounds reasonable. Boys, I could shake your hands at £30. It, it's here and now. Go on, let's yeah. do it. Let's yeah. get that first bike cool. done. Let's do right. it. Great. Nice one. Thanks. Nice one. So no. we have a saw. Yeah. And we have a plough. A saw plough. All we need is a farm. Oh, <laughs> I think I saw one on the way in. All right, let's see if it's for sale. Follow me. Thanks, Dan. OK, yep. Thank you. Yep. Cheers. <laughs> Chaps. Hang on, we haven't paid him. Oh. <laughs> we agreed on £30, yeah? We did, yeah. But what, I have, what I have here is £100, which I would... I'd really like you to have. What are you up to, David? In exchange for... What we've already got, and the boar's head. Ah, that was a cheeky move. I know you're thinking, that's an awful lot of money for those things, but I want you to have it. <laughs> I really do. I don't want to scrimp, I just want to say, look. Listen, David... Put, put it in your hand I and couldn't do that. There's still meat on the bone there, boys. Yeah. Um, £100, you know, that's only a good dinner. What do you want so... for the boar's head, then? 
120. Oh, I still want 120 oh, for it. Oh, no, no. That, that's me on that, I'm afraid. Sorry. 120. 120. Yep. So yeah, 150 in total for the three items, guys. Yep. Nice. Are we done? Yep. Nice little parcel. Right, lovely. lovely. Yeah, Thanks. no well, worries. Nice no one, one got hurt. <laughs> Except the ball. <laughs> we got there, and the boys are off to a flying start. Back in Newmarket, it looks like Mark is onto something else. Carrie, come and have a look at these. Those little winning trophies there. Oh, I mean, they're yeah. modelled at horseshoes, aren't they? In my teenage years, growing up in Royston, you see the race horses going across yeah. the heath in the morning, and you know this is a really important subject for this particular area yeah, of the is. country. So. Can we find out how much they are? Time for round two with Nas. Stand by, girl. They're great fun, aren't they? they? What are they made of? I think they're just tin. Ooh. And I'm guessing they would go on the horse car. Um, what's it called? What do you keep a horse in? Horse box. Stables. <laughs> Stables. Oh, that's it. <laughs> but you see, I, I tell you what. I've got to trust you with my horses. These plucks are priced at £178. I'm keeping your hands well away from this deal. Yeah. You just hold That's those. You... Actually, just hold them all, <laughs> and it will keep you occupied. Um, I tell you what, because you lost a fiver last time, let's say 105. Oh! Thank you so much. Yes. She said yes! That's a whopping £155 on their first two items. Well, I'm pleased oh, with those. I'm really pleased. Time to catch up with the boys and their new friend, don't you know? Boris the Boar! Boris the Boar! Oh, I've always fancied a fourth child. <laughs> <laughs> Boris, you're mine. <laughs> David, Will and Boris the Boar <laughs> have meandered their way to the illustrious university city of Cambridge, where, amongst the bicycles and hallowed spires, lies a hidden footballing past. What's all that about? You like your football? I love football. Do you? I absolutely love football. I'm passionate about football. When I was a kid, everybody in my school in East London had an out-of-London team. It was always yeah. Manchester United, mine was Liverpool. I started going to watch Liverpool whenever they were in London. And then, years later, my cousin played for Liverpool. What? Um, John Barnes. Hang yeah, on. he played for Liverpool. John and... Barnes is your cousin? Yeah. Barnesy, the legend. The legend that is John Barnes. Oh, my, cousin, my yeah. God. How cool is that? Very, very cool. David and Will are here to find out how this unassuming scrap of ground, known as Parker's Peace, is responsible for the rise of the world's most popular ball game. Football fan Alan Ward is on hand to tell them all about it. Uh, Alan, I've never known that this was the birthplace of football. Is that true? Well, it is true in the sense that this was the first time that the rules were written down in one place here at Cambridge. I've got you. So before they formalised them, what was football like? Well, it was a pretty <laughs> lawless game. It was played, played over a whole day with 100 people aside uh, between two villages. Wow. And the idea was <laughs> no you got way. the ball or the object from one place to the other. Football's British origins began as a mob game. This archive from the 1920s shows hundreds of men and boys chasing a ball. Rather fun. In fact, from the Middle Ages to the late 19th century, the games were wild. No holds barred affairs, pitting areas of the same town against each other, ending up with gangs of men brawling in the streets. It sounds like a really violent game. Well, it was extremely violent. Um, and often the games were played on bank holidays because people didn't have any time off from work. So it was a bank holiday, big game between two villages, extremely violent, lots of people hurt and injured. It was discussed as to whether the game would be banned because people weren't able to go to work the following day. Lots of people were injured and hurt. To keep the workforce in one piece, <laughs> efforts were made to restrict these mob games, although they continued to be played in some areas as annual spectacles. Public schools and colleges adopted a rather less violent version of the game, but the rules remained ambiguous. Some schools allowed the ball to be handled, others did not. This made playing against anyone who came from a different school very difficult, naturally. Get it? So if the rules were sort of slightly different throughout the country and from college to college, how did they decide which rules they were going to play under? Was it the home team that decided? Here in Cambridge, 
the, um, the colleges would, would come to Parker's Peace and they said, well, why don't we all just play to the same rules? And so in 1848, the Cambridge rules were written down and that's the first time that the, the rules were formalised. In 1848, a group of students pinned their Cambridge rules to a tree here at Parker's Peace. This was the first time a single set of rules was agreed by more than one college football team. Alan has very kindly recreated the pinning of those rules today. This is talking about throw-ins and goal kicks and how to kick off and, and no player must be tripped or pushed or held back by hand. It's, it's like really things that we take for granted. There are still details missing, like the number of players and length of a match, but within 15 years the Football Association was created. The FA used the Cambridge rules to form the modern game of football. In an age of the British Empire, people travelled from these shores, taking the rules of football with them and sharing this new game with the world. So, so you're saying really that, that on various continents throughout the world, footballing nations owe their footballing origins to Britain? Yes. Wow. Slightly embarrassing that we're not any better at it, isn't it? We won't go then. <laughs> Come on, let's Come go on, for then. it. Come on, then's the ball. Oh, nice turn! <laughs> and so the game loved by so many today around the world owes everything to a handful of students who had a kickabout here in Cambridge in 1848. Hey, pass the ball, lads. Meanwhile, across the county border in Suffolk, Mark and Carrie are continuing their search at Clare Antiques and Interiors. Hello. Hello, Mark. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you. I'm Carrie. Hi, Carrie. I'm David. Good to see you. Hello, We're going to have a good look round. Wonderful. Thanks very much. Paul? Here we go. <laughs> There's no hanging around, and just as well. Carrie, surely you can persuade Mark to take a gamble on something. This blue case of I... stuff. <laughs> Quality always sells. Cheap doesn't. I'm saying no more. I'll just leave you with that thought for the day. Something else, perhaps? It's absolutely ghastly. <laughs> it's awful. Oh, my gosh. Maybe Mark's right about that one. Another try. Mm. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? A pair of glasses. Well, it's actually, yes, you can take the glasses out. Those are cool. <laughs> Proper vintage glasses. They are, aren't they? Oh, wow. Try them on. Oh, you look fabulous. You look like a doctor. You look as if you're just about to analyse like me. <laughs> if my head's like that, I'm fine. It really works. <laughs> But I love the case. Do you know what it's made of? Yeah, no. What's that? Mother of Pearl is that? What's that? It is Mother of Pearl and Abalone shell. And it's made of papier mache. No. Yes. And it's Victorian. That dates oh, to about 1890. We're having it. You really like oh, those, I don't really you? I really like instantly warm to those. There's £28 on the ticket. Time to talk money with dealer David. Look out. Hello. Hello, Mark. We've fallen in love with these um, sp vintage spectacles in the glass case. Oh, wonderful, yes. We're putting them into auction. We're wondering whether we can get a really good price on them. I'll certainly do my best. Will yes. you? Yeah. And we were wondering whether we could get it for 15. I can't do 15, Mark, but I, I could stretch to 18. <gasps> Shall we? We love 18. Thank you. you. We love Fantastic. 18. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank That's you. very kind of you. Right, right. Carrie, what yes. can I say? That was wonderful. We've ended the day on a high. Turning into quite a team, aren't they? £18 gets them their third item and wraps up shopping on an eventful day. Just time for our celebrity husband and wife to catch up before they kick. Because I'm such a beginner and newcomer to this, I still have that genuine belief that I will find something for a little bit of money that's worth a lot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've got to be able to do that. They get on well, don't they? Nighty night. It's a new day and time to compare notes. Will was just so good, he corrected me in a really nice way. Like, I'd be going, let's buy this. And he'd go, yeah, that, that's in do you like that? That's interesting. That's really good. Really? Because Mark me tell didn't you, do that. Mark me just me corrected me in a horrible way. Really? Like yeah. what? I just gave you the look. Just gave me the look. He loves you, really. 
she was so nice and pleasant to work with and so enthusiastic the shop. But everything I showed her, she seemed not terribly impressed with. <laughs> you mean she hated? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, Mark and Carrie bought her a pair of vases, some equestrian plaques, some spectacles and a lovely frog's mouth spectacle case, leaving them £227 to spend today. Well, I'm pleased with those. I'm really pleased. While David and Will picked up a boar's head, a rustic saw and a push hoe. <laughs> Still, they have £250 to play with. Well done. Well Very good. <laughs> so when you, um, when you were looking, what kind of things were you looking for? Small things? I was things. looking for things that would make a profit and beat you. So that was basically the criteria. And you? Uh, yeah, the same. <laughs> Pretty much. OK, chaps, time for round two. Oh, look, here they are. Oh, yeah. What a stylish couple oh. we are. <laughs> Hello! Do you know that sounded a lot smoother with Carrie driving it? No, it no, it didn't. It didn't. It just sounded a little more Morning. relaxed because Morning. she doesn't actually Morning. give it loads. Do we not deserve the red car? I, I <laughs> think you drove it beautifully. Oh, right. It was yeah. so smooth. I think we've earned it. I think you misunderstand. You see, the red car is the winner's car. <laughs> oh, well, that that you have actually asked. You haven't fine. earned it yet. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, excuse I me. Should... I'm not getting involved. I'll make a deal with you. If, if you win, I'll buy the car. Get out of town. Is matrimonial bliss suspended for the rest of the competition, then? David asked me this morning... Yes. ..how I got on yesterday. Yes. And I told him that I'd bought everything. No. <laughs> Are you trying to wind him up? Yeah. You're playing games with this man? Yeah, oh, yeah. I've been sending him secret texts, calling him a loser. <laughs> Is this something you do on a regular basis? Oh, yeah. That's a show. It's a, it's a competition. <laughs> I'm not sure if David's competitive about the antiques or just the car. She has to earn driving this car by winning. And as that's not going to happen, then she may not try it Exactly. Again. She's had her chance, mate. Our teams will be selling their antiques at an auction in Norfolk's Downham Market. But our first stop today is in the Hertfordshire market town of Hitchin. David and Will are at Marie Antiques for a rummage about. So, off you go, lads. And where's Marie? Again, more spangly jewellery. These are nice, though, aren't they? These sort of hard stone pieces. Oh, I keep wanting to buy things for Carrie here. Uh, do, yeah, we're not buying for Carrie. <laughs> no, we're buying we're for us for a profit. What about over here? Oh, oh, oh. What have you spotted? Oh. What's that? Well... Continuing on our animal theme, <laughs> this looks like a fish slice, I would imagine, by the fact that it's a fish. Was it kind of shaped that way, though, no, has it? You don't, want to, you don't want to lose your salmon steak, do you? When so, you... You, so you'd actually cut it and lift it, wouldn't you? Yeah, this would be for passing the fish. So are the, those bits the serrated edges? Well, I suppose you could if you wanted, but no, I, I think the shape is purely decorative and slightly humorous. Oh, yes. It's the most amusing fish slice I've ever seen. And it'll cost you 45 with no chips. I like this a lot. It's not bad quality, actually. But do you think that we might uh, like get some interest? Mm -hmm. I think it's a bit quirky, isn't it? A bit it's different. different. We've got Boris the boar. Why not have Freddy the fish? Absolutely. Time to talk money with dealer Savvy Sheila. OK. Now. <laughs> <laughs> We like that. You like um, it. I'm not surprised. Like it. It's a beautiful it's, item. It is fun, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. But um, the price is just a little bit out of our comfort zone. Can you give me an idea of where we could go with this? Well, I can do, but, you know, it's a good item at 45, but, of course, I will see if there is anything that we can do. I just need to go out the back to check that. No okay? problem. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Fingers crossed the owner is willing to give a little discount. Sheila makes the call. Think positive. Think positive. Senpai. Okay, Good news guys, or bad news? I think you're going to find this is amazing news. Go on. OK. We like you. Oh. Okay? oh. That's good. It's happened once before. That's almost as unique as the fish. <laughs> yes. And that's unique what I've just said as well. And so is this, because we're going to offer you that for £5. Get what? out of town. Oh, my goodness. A Lady Godiva. Yes. Oh, he's on, stop it, he's straight in his <laughs> yes. pocket. I think that's a deal. 
right? I should say so. That's an incredibly generous discount. Thank you, Thank you, guys. Okay, bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Wow. With £40 off, the boys get a once-in-a-lifetime deal. They must be happy with that. Bonkers. Do you know what? I'm going to kick my heels. <laughs> <laughs> nice! <laughs> Elsewhere, Mark and Carrie have made a 50-mile journey west into Hertfordshire as they head for lovely Letchworth. Ooh, Letchworth Garden City. Sounds very nice. Now, you know I have a really big connection there. Do you? I do. Tell Because my mum and dad owned the station shop. My mum loved it. She just, like, once, once she retired, she did this for about maybe five or six years they owned it and it was just brilliant she loved it because she loved people so i know nothing about the history of Lexington. no i don't i'm sorry to say ashamed to say well now's your chance carrie and david are visiting the local museum to find out how these leafy surroundings sparked a social revolution to explain how this town changed the way people lived in cities worldwide is curator josh tidy Hello. Hello, I'm welcome. Harry. I'm Josh. Hi, Josh. I'm Mark. Hello, do you come through? Where did it all begin, Josh? So it all began with Ebenezer Howard, who was a social reformer who was trying to solve the problems of the late Victorian age. In Victorian Britain, people flocked to the cities looking for work, but overcrowded homes crammed next to factories meant workers were constantly subjected to the smoke and squalor of their industrial surroundings. Poverty was rife, and the average life expectancy was just 40 years. But Ebenezer Howard, who'd grown up in London, had a vision to change the way people lived. He wanted to plan the construction of new towns with an altogether different approach. So the biggest influences on Howard really were uh, industrial villages uh, set up by factory benefactors like uh, Cadbury's, uh, who created Bourneville, and uh, Lord Lever, who created Port Sunlight up near Liverpool. And they were really looking at imp increasing the productivity of the workers. Um, so healthier, happier workers would obviously be off sick less and produce more. Um, and Howard was sort of inspired by that, but also felt that it should apply to everyone and not just be uh, to do with increasing productivity. In 1898, Ebenezer Howard published his book, Garden Cities of Tomorrow. He set out his vision of people leaving industrial cities behind to work in the new towns that offered employment and the benefits of a rural lifestyle. So the book really sets out his vision for garden cities and um, it's packed full of uh, diagrams, which is where he best uh, illustrates his ideas, including this one, the three magnets. And this is a very simple idea, but very neatly expressed. And it's combining all of the best parts of town and the best parts of country life, but without either of the worst parts. So you end up with different uses for different areas of the town. You have areas for workers' housing so they can walk to work. You also have planned green spaces right in the heart of the town so people can enjoy that. Amazing, isn't it? Isn't it fantastic, yeah. actually? He wanted it really to be a network of associated towns. In fact, he thought if the idea was really a success, he actually thought the problem might be that London would wonder what to do with the empty husk as everyone had left. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely thought. <laughs> the diagrams were simple, but Howard's ideas were a sea change in town planning. Zones were created to separate housing and industry, and communities were surrounded by agricultural land in what became the country's first green belt. Residents could access invigorating green spaces, and most revolutionary of all, rent paid in these new towns was invested back into the community rather than lining the pockets of landlords. In 1903, the new town of Letchworth became the world's first garden city. Its village greens, arts and crafts, style houses and zoned areas were the realisation of Howard's dream. Letchworth soon attracted the attention of people excited to see what life in this new garden city was like. So this is Andrew Muir, and he is one of the early settlers that are affectionately known as cranks. So lots of people are interested in the simple life and um, rational dress, so they rejected the sort of uh, formal attire of Edwardian um, England and went with these smocks. That would have been outrageous at the time, right? <laughs> Letchworth and its cranks were regarded as a sort of a curiosity okay. by the rest of it, the country, I think. 
people came up from London on a day trip to have a look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the city, just look at the people. Indeed. Yeah. Howard's revolutionary Letchworth Garden City became a blueprint for new towns across the world. Locations like Sao Paulo and Christchurch in New Zealand, as well as parts of New York and Los Angeles, all owe their design to Letchworth, the garden city that remains a testament to Ebenezer Howard's dream of a utopian living environment. How interesting. Meanwhile, Will and David have one last stop on their shopping trip and are pootling west to Barton Le Clay. And their final stop is in this local antique centre. Here we are. OK. Listen, I... just don't buy any more clouds. OK, I'm sorted with that. <laughs> this place is huge. There's plenty here for them to spend their remaining £245. How about... Look, you go that way and I'll go this way. Go on, then. See you later. There's a lot here. Nice. That might be a, a goer for our rural lot. Yeah, one of the first presents that I ever got that I, I was really, truly excited about was a camera. You know, as a child, just having a camera was a great thing, and, and I loved it, I cherished it, I loved taking photos. And this kind of reminds me of that excitement. First World War, this is from 1912 to 1914, even before the war, people had these. In fact, I really like this. David loves it, and it's ticketed at £35. Oh, here comes Will. Hello, young sir. Can I interest you in any fresh milk? <laughs> I'm ready for the American football field. You've got to be kidding. I uh, really? <laughs> I thought to add to our country lot. So would you like put two buckets yeah. on the end of those? Two buckets. Off you go. Oh wow! Do you think anyone would buy this? Well, I don't know. Unless you want to veto me. But no, uh, listen. I I'm just not the you... expert. Well, listen. We just got good? money burning a hole in our pocket, and I want to try and spend as much as we can. Okay. What is it? It was. What was it? It oh. was forty-eight pounds. It's, it's now uh... twenty-eight pounds. But tell me, what have you been looking at? What's oh. going on here? I've been looking at these cameras. I love old cameras. Do you? And this one has particularly caught my attention. Well, that's two items to think about. The owner of the yoke has left them their number. Time to make a call. Thank you. Hello, Stan. We saw your milkmaid's yoke and wondered if you might be able to help us out. At the moment, you've got 28 on it. Would a nice round 20 buy it? Yeah, 20 quid? Are you happy with that? All oh, right then, lovely. Doodle pip. Yes. That's an eight pound discount and the yoke is theirs. But if you want anything else, you better get a move on because here comes the yellow peril. That cheeky what's it? I tell you what. How long have they had in I, here? I have no idea, Carrie. But Taking I'm... all the best stuff. Well, they're certainly trying their best, Carrie. Carrie, we've got no time to waste. I know, let's get straight in there. Are we going to spend all our money? Well, only if it's going to make us lots of money. I'm finally fortunate. getting the hang of it. You are getting the hang of it. <laughs> These two have £227 weighing them down. Oh, nice. £480. Put it back. You tell him, Carrie. Cameras, do they sell? Only certain ones. That's a code for no. Well, don't tell David then. <laughs> Although the boys have their eye on something else. I absolutely love this. A little mahogany fist. Well, it's kind of like a maybe not mahogany, I'm maybe more it's sort mahogany, of fruit yeah. wood or perhaps a little boxwood or something like that. It's a fist, but check this out. Good spot, Will. What is that? It's a novelty pipe bowl carved in the form of a clenched fist. Ticketed at £29, it's certainly an unusual lot, but wait, there's more. What do you reckon to that? Now, what's that made of? What would that be? That's horn, and mm -hmm. I'm almost certain that is silver-mounted, though I can't find a hallmark. I like this. Could have been used maybe at a pre-hunt meet. It looks the kind of thing, doesn't it? Yeah, to maybe just have a little glass of sherry before you're off. Hold on a minute. Whiskey. Oh, 
you have a man with a nose here. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, whatever went in it, there's 22 pounds on that beaker. They now have several potentials to consider. I say, how about Carrie and Mark? It's a little lady's original cigarette case. And it's got mm. Helen from Roy, 8th of the 6th, 1929. It's continental silver. It's Mark 925. And it's enamelled in this lovely lilac enamel. An engine turned underneath, so it gives it a lovely quality feel. I like it. I like it. But? But? It's lovely quality, very dainty. 175, that's a, that feels like a huge risk. It is a huge risk, but do we like taking risks? I do. What would we say yes to? Oh, gosh. I, I mean, it's a big ask, I think, but if we could get it for 125 or less, it might, be, it might stand a chance, and it is a good quality item. OK, do you want me to buy this? I would like to maybe find out what we could get it for. You do that then, Mark, and let Carrie have a gander. Oh, my gosh, that's adorable. Mark? Where has he got to? Okay. Thank you very much. No I'll tell her. Oh, hello. Carrie? Yes? Don't shout at me. I bought it. How much did you get? 125 OK. The exact price. I know. But it is lovely. It's, it's worth a chance, isn't it? You've got to make at least... Four million. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that would be a find. But that's a £50 discount for the cigarette case. Now it's the boys' turn to chat with dealer Steve. OK. Right. We've got a few items that we've right. chosen okay. from your selection. Mm -hmm. Right, what should we go for first? Let's go for this one. OK, Beaker first. Steve's got the owner on the phone. There we go, it's Judy. Hi, Judy. We've been rather taken by a little horn beaker. It's got 22 on it. Yeah, I'm going to say yes to that, and thank you very much. Judy, thank you so much. £15. Schmoozer, that's a £7 discount for the beaker. Now for the pipe. What's it, sorry, the moment. It's on at 29. Okay. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try and break your back on it. Would a straight 20 quid buy that? Do you know what? Let's do it. Yeah? Yep. That's £20 for the pipe and £15 for the beaker. Now for the camera. Hope you've been watching, David, because it's your turn. I've got quite a tight budget and I was wondering if we could, uh, we could agree on a figure that I could just part with now of around 20 quid. If I go to 25... It, this is all yours, yep. remember? OK, yeah, 25. I'll agree on 25, yeah? Shall I pass you back? OK, thank you. Well done. Yeah. Yep. £80 gets them the yoke, beaker, pipe and camera. That's no been problem. great. OK, yeah. enjoy those. Yeah, you grab those. I'll grab me yoke. Let's hope it's a double yoker and their shopping is complete. Oh, oh, no! Oh, look out! Hello. Bags of stuff back. Oh, this isn't yeah. fair. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't bother to go in there. No? Yeah, no. Don't bother, no. We've had all the good you, stuff. You've bought all the rubbish already. Oh. No. Listen, they're like a pair of people in the dark room looking for a black cat anyway. Come on. <laughs> oh! <laughs> is he always that rude? Yes. <laughs> now you have the place to yourself. And what's Carrie found? It's a child's chair. Yeah. You know, I'm quite impressed with you. Oh. And I'm so glad you found this, because I can sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I like it for a couple of reasons. People collect charger, and it's a rocker. Okay. I just... You see, this is all turned. Nicely turned here. There's a lot of wear on there, so people have used that. Yes, Kids have but that sort of hands. tells it of its history, doesn't it? It does. But this is rather simple here. But it is only £35. That's what I was thinking. Edwardian, if we could get that a little bit cheaper. When is the Edwardian period? That's when Edward is around. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm not needed. <laughs> I think that's a possibility, you know. Well done, you. We've not seen Steve for a while, so let's get him back in. We want to be a bit mean, yeah. if we can. I Sorry. Knew this bit was coming. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel it. I'm sure yeah. the others were much nicer than us. Yes. But um, we'd like to get it for about 20. What's the price on that then? I, I think it's 22, isn't it? It's 25. <laughs> That's a two, isn't it? Do you know what? Yeah. Can <gasps> we do it? <gasps> shake his hand quick. Yeah. There we go. God, I told yes. you to shake his hand. Well done, Steve. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. We're really thrilled oh with that. Oh, my gosh. I We're going to make money on that. I hope so. Thank you so much. No We're all done. We're okay. done. We're shopped out. We're good. 
You certainly are. Now, with all that shopping complete, brace yourselves. Should we show? Come on, yeah, reveal. Let's do it. All right. Ready? Alakazam. Do you have oh, a warthog? A warthog? Wow. This is a wild boar, or at least was a wild boar. It still is. Oh, I'm not it sure about is. that. <laughs> You're What's not sure that? on that? What's that? Well, this is our... Uh, we've gone for a bit of a tactical lot here, bearing in mind we're going to a rural auction house. Yes. Yeah. So we thought we'd get something that might appeal to the rich farmer boys. Wow. That's a good lot. It's yeah. quite what, fun. What's the spoon, Will? The spoon is actually just silver-plated. It's also a fish slice. But it's kind of fun, isn't it? How much was there? We asked what her best price was. You won't believe it. She said a fiver. No. A yes. fiver. Oh, you're going to make money on we that. We got it for a fiver. Well, the hand thing. The hand, the hand thing? thing. I love it. It's, it's a, a pipe. pipe. It's, it's a pipe. pipe. Yes. It's great, isn't it? And you, yeah, you put it with the horn. I've put it with the horn beaker, which again we picked up Hang today. Hang on a minute. How many bits of this no, is No, that's you? a lot. It's that's a lot. lot. It is a lot. It's way, way a... too much. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. I think you've done really well. They've yeah, done well. I think I'm you sorry. have, to I, be honest. I, I, just... I hate to say it. That's no, really kind of But they've done extremely well. Well, it's very nice a minute. We haven't you. seen your lot yet. Oh, no, yes. trust me, you've done well. Yeah, <laughs> let's have a look. Shall we? Careful now. Oh, no, look! Oh, man. Oh, I love I love this. You just bought that in there, didn't you? Yeah. Carrie found that. I saw that. 20 quid. No 20 way. Pounds. It was cheap enough at 35. I know. <laughs> oh my god. 20 pounds. Look sun. at these. Oh. And you've got the spectacles. Yes. Nice. Fabulous. And this, nice. All, this is perfect. It's I love top. them. What's that clanging? Don't drop a the, the, They look are, really the, stylish. They're, they're French, Paris probably. Etruscan style. They are really designer interior. And I wanted them for 45, but Carrie shook hands at 50. <laughs> 50 is still <laughs> cheap, Mark. From the really agricultural to the delicate and tasteful. Ooh. Oh, he's being oh, nice. Oh, listen, on he's that... He's damning me with St. Prince. No, on that note, <laughs> I think we better leave. Come on. Oh, well, let's see what he really thinks. Mark's got a certain look, and he's gone very well with those porcelain vases. Oh, the beautiful. little card case, the enamel card case, beautiful. I don't think they've got loads for the boar's head, but that spoon thing oh. and the pipe. I tell you what, that things. spoon, I can't believe it. Five quid. <laughs> the glasses, the Victorian glasses I love. Yeah, that's yeah. quirky. And the chair, I think the chair oh. is their good lot there. I really hope silver and enamel cigarette box as well. Might come back to haunt you, that one. It might do. <laughs> I don't like it when you wag, wag your finger at me. <laughs> Time now to head north into Norfolk for the auction in Downham Market. Has anybody got any pre-auction jitters? I feel like all of my bravado has left me. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my mojo with the fear of being beaten. <laughs> Do you know what? I saw your stuff and I was like, OK, I'm going to lose. For me, this whole thing has been about beating you, but now we're here. You still want it's to beat not, me? No, no, well, yes, I do, but if I beat you and lose money, I'll still feel like I failed. So is it a matter of who loses the most? Who loses the most is the loser. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, I'm glad that's straight. Downer Market was once the hiding place for King Charles I after his defeat at the Battle of Naseby. But who'll trounce who today? Oh, I can, Oh, I recognise that sound. Oh, no. Loving it. So He's like bad. a boy with a new toy. That's so We bad. haven't noticed. Come on. How are you, mate? I'm good. good How are you doing? You. All right. Are you well, ready? Listen, yeah, come on. We've come got on, no we need time to, get to in. Lose. OK, let's go for it. Oh, of course. Let's remind ourselves what they bought. Carrie and Mark spent the most, splashing £318 on five lots for auction while David and Will parted with £235. After combining a few things, they also have five auction lots. But what does Barry from Barry Hawkins Auctioneers make of it all? The little plough is an actual factor. Oh, we see them time after time. The, the whole lot all together with the yoke and saw is probably going to make £10 at the outside. Ah, now the little cigarette case, absolutely delightful. And that could, again, top £100. While Barry relaxes with a cup of tea, his colleague Julia is first up with a gavel. Everybody ready? Selling for £14. First lot of the day is David and Will's silver-plated fish slice. 
Who? Start me this. Start me twenty pounds on this nice little fish slice. Fifteen pounds iron fish. Oh. Eighteen. Twenty. Oh, Twenty-two. Here we go. Twenty-four. Twenty-six. Twenty-eight. Thirty. Selling for thirty pounds. Well Lots done, you. Well done. What, a, what a really good buy. I'm so pleased well for you. Lots of food. Lots of <laughs> Very gracious. Well, the generous discount on the fish slice ensured a tidy profit. Eight. As a result, I'll take Eight, that. Ten. Now, Carrie fell in love with the glasses and Mark adored the frogmouth case. But will they take the fancy of the bidders? The glasses are actually inside it. All the little glasses there. Do you need them modelled? Twenty. <laughs> Twenty pounds. Fifteen. Oh, come on. Ten pounds iron bid. Ten pounds oh, up no. twelve. You're in. Fourteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Eighteen pounds with me at the moment. Oh, Eighteen. Come on. Twenty. Twenty pounds I have. Twenty pounds I have. Twenty pounds. Any more? Oh, I thought they might be more than that. Twenty pounds. Oh. Carrie's first lot of the day, and it's a small profit. Your Eight. next Eight best pounds. lot is coming up. Next. It's my favourite lot. Oh, I love it. Next, it's the combination lot of the treen pipe and beaker. Nice little lot there. Very nice. Say to the century moment. Oh, so, sorry, <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, twenty pounds on that. Twenty pounds iron bid. Twenty-five, thirty. Thirty pounds. Thirty-five, forty. Forty pounds. Forty pounds. Forty-five, fifty. Fifty pounds of me on the way. On the commission on it as well. Fifty-two. Fifty-five. Fifty-five pounds of me. Sixty I have now. Yeah. Sixty-five. Sixty-five on the book. Sixty-five on the book. Sixty-five on the book. Any more, anybody? Still cheap. Any more. Selling for sixty-five pounds. Thirty pounds. Thirty pounds. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Do you know, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite relieved. We thought you might get more than that for that. Is that a compliment or what? Either way, it's two profits for the boys. That's all your Three good luck's now gone. Seven. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hopefully the good luck is heading your way, Carrie. It's your pair of vases next. Just look at those. They're very stylish. <laughs> what a pair. Who'll start me off? £20 on those. £20 on the vases. £10 I bid. 12 14 16 18 Come up. That'll come up. 20 no, 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 no. 22 You've only got £130 Look at him, £24. to go. £24. £24. £24. £24. £24. Any more. Any more. Selling them at £24. Pounds. 763. Oh, that was... Sorry, Carrie. <laughs> the buyer isn't sorry. He's grabbed a real bargain. But it's another loss for Carrie. Do you know, I really am disappointed about that. £75 forward. £24. Pounds. We're distraught at this end. Next, it's Carrie and Mark's biggest spend. So it's £125. If it sells for a thousand, we might win. <laughs> if it sells for a thousand, I'll give you the money myself. A <laughs> hundred pounds I am bid. One hundred pounds I am bid. 110 anywhere. Come on. 110 anywhere. 110. 120 on my book. 120 on my book. One more. 125 in the room. The voice 125 in the room. It's on this pretty little thing. 125. Oh, come on. Selling for 125 pounds. It's a disaster. That could have been a lot worse. Guys. That could have been a lot worse. That's it, Mark. Stay on the positive side, mate. Maybe a change of scenery will alter your luck. The auction moves through to another space for the rest of the lot. And here comes Barry to shake things up. Wakey, wakey, ten. It's fast and furious. It certainly is. Time for David's camera. A oh, five, a five, a bit of five, and a five, six, eight, 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 ten, again, twelve, a twelve, twelve, one, a fifteen, a fifteen, eighteen, 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 twenty, a twenty-one, twenty. Up the top at twenty pounds. You know, many quick here at twenty pounds. That's your first loss. That feels horrible, right? Yes, it does, doesn't it? It feels really like someone's punched you. It's certainly not pleasant. A first loss for David and Will in double quick time. Stand by. David, I just wish you'd bought all the lots. <laughs> we should have trusted you. Right, Mark and Carrie need to make a comeback. Next is their equestrian lot. Good luck, chaps. You'll stop that one, 30, 40 pounds. 
a 5, a 5, a minute 5, 8, 8, and 8, 10, and 10, 12, and 12, and 12, 15, and 15, 18, 18, but 18, 20, and 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Someone has grabbed a fantastic deal for those plaques, leaving Carrie and Mark with another loss. Listen, you could give the boar's head away and we'd still leave. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I can't believe that. It's not over yet. Boris, your time has come. The boar's head... Uh, it's good. Right, you're right, that one about six or seventy pounds, <laughs> a tenner. Ten a bit of ten, fifteen, fifteen, twenty, twenty, and five, divide, divide, thirty, thirty, five, 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 divide. Fifty, I've got on my book at fifty pounds. Sixty, sixty, seventy, oh eighty, ninety, ninety pounds, ninety, ninety pounds, ninety. Come on! Ooh. And ninety pounds, ninety oh. on the shelf at ninety. Are you all a minute? Round it up to a hundred. Oh. We got away with that. Just it did. Despite some gentle encouragement from auctioneer Barry, it's still a loss for the boar. Can I just say, it was only when he got. To 90. I realised he wasn't saying 17, 18, 19. Well, pay attention because it's your combined agricultural lot. Next. Uh, 15, but 15, and 15, but 15, 18, 18, but 18, Stop 18, but 18, 18, 18. You know what I mean? Then quick, yeah, 18, 20. Did you going to go your age? 21. <laughs> 22. 22, 4, 24, 24, 26, 26, 26, 26, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, 28, Never before has so much rested on such a little chair. Right, I have bids on the book. Uh, one of four pounds. Oh, <laughs> send them home, Barry. Four, I'm bidding four, but bid four, six, and six, eight, eight, and eight, ten, twelve, and twelve, fifteen, eighteen, eighteen, twenty, but twenty-two. Twenty-two, twenty-two. Come on. Twenty-five, twenty-eight. Come 30, on. 30, 30. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Come on. At thirty pounds. Go on. Oh, he says no more. Thirty pounds. You know, I'm going to quick get a 30 pounds. A profit for Gary. I think we've been just so That's unlucky rubbish. today. <laughs> you made a profit. Yes, a second profit of the day for Carrie and Mark. But is it enough? Time to do the maths. Carrie and Mark started off with £400 and after auction costs made a loss of £113.82, leaving a total of £286.18. Lovely couple, aren't they? David and Will also began with £400. After sale and fees are deducted, they too made a loss, albeit a smaller one, of £42.30. So, after a final total of £357.70, they are today's winners. Cheer up. Humbling victory. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> but we're all winners in life. We're winners in yes, life. Yes, we are. Off you go. Yeah. Yeah, I've well never done. celebrated losing before. <laughs> Get in the car. Come on, Nick. Well done, Will. Cheers, Mark. It's been good fun, mate. Listen, David, make oh. the most of it, yeah? Make I will. the most of it. Thank you. Get this. You know that, don't you? That's it, Carrie. Humble in victory, gracious in defeat. Would you ever go to an auction again? Oh, yeah, I loved it. It's so exciting. Of course you did. I'll tell you what's even better, though. What? Having lunch. Should we find a club in that one? Yeah, winner pays. No, loser pays. Winner pays. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll pay. Cheerio.